iZombie Season 2, Episode 12, Fifty Shades of Grey Matter. Glad to see the show finally come back. I still don't understand why we got that weird one episode uh, mid-season premiere and then we waited like another full month to see the show, but I'm glad it's back on. I think this was a pretty good episode that definitely had some very surprising moments to it. Um, there, there are just a lot of different little things that happened in this. One that I want to mention up top because it's it's just like a little comedy thing but I, i'll probably forget because it was such a quick little moment but when Liv and clive were listening to the audiobook read by Kristen bell that was a little inside reference because this show for anyone who doesn't know is made by the uh guy who did veronica mars which of course starred Kristen bell so when Liv was like i feel like an odd connection to her it's because the person that made this show or at least um adapted this show from the comic book May Veronica Morris, so I thought that was a cool little reference that they put in there, but outside of that little funny moment, everything that happened in this, all the little things were really great, and we had like a suspenseful moment where I thought for sure they were going to find, uh, they were going to find out that Major was someone that had the dog, they of course actually found Blaine, and then he got off, which I'm going to save that for the end, because that was the biggest, that was the craziest moment of this entire episode, but the main case, definitely enjoyed it. Very funny, of course, Liv on this um, erotica um, novelist brain was really funny. And her, like, spanking Ravi and stuff and asking him and Major if they ever wrestled and stuff like that. That was just some really funny stuff. I love the part where she talked about Clive, like, he really fills out the shirts. And they're both just like, mm-hmm. That was a really funny moment, too. And her just... Saying all this stuff, and like when she was rubbing Clive's back when they are listening to the audiobook, and her thinking of the nurse, that, the home nurse that was um, the guy's, at the guy's house in the beginning of the episode, when that first happened, I didn't realize that, um, you know, of course she was hallucinating. And even after he did that, I thought something, I was, it was so weird, I was like, with it being a zombie show, I was like, does he think you know, because he's a zombie that she's going to do that. I just thought he was a zombie, and that's why he did that. So it was such a weird thing. And that's why he did that, as if all zombies can sell their zombies. And then it was like, oh, okay, she's just hallucinating. But I also thought, because I knew it was, like, the erotica brain, I thought it still could have happened if he did something crazy, and she just responded because she was on that brain. And then I was like, oh, she's just completely hallucinating. But it was really funny, and... You know, that I really enjoyed, and it did lead to an interesting moment where, you know, she ends up sleeping with the guy at the end of the episode. I definitely cannot remember that guy's name whatsoever, but he's working for Stacy Boss, and, you know, she ends up sleeping with him at the end of this episode after, of course, getting, like, the perfect sentence from Peyton. Like, you know, you sleep with someone, you think you know them. And I thought that that's who that was. I thought it was the guy when it ended up being Peyton, and I was like, oh, I guess that didn't happen. And then she gave the line, and I was like, okay, well, for like a split second, it was like, all right, she'll think of that, but she'll end up sleeping with the guy anyway, just for random reasons. And then she opened the door, and I was like, oh, never mind, she already did it, and that was obvious before she, you know, they actually showed him turn over and stuff. So, I guess they're going to have an interesting relationship, and we'll see where that goes, of course, because he's working for, like, the main bad guy. But, I don't know, there's it's just some crazy stuff in this episode, and, you know, Peyton, of course, sleeping with Blaine, it ended up happening, which I figured it would, because, of course, that was just how they were playing it, where Peyton never really mentioned, like, oh, this is the guy, because it was just like, oh, it's just this guy that I find kind of attractive, and he's helping me out doing work, and I thought that they'd end up together, and that would go on for maybe... You know, just for a couple episodes. I figured that would happen and they'd be together until things got out in the open and it's like, you cannot be with this guy because of this, this, and this. And it just all happened at once. It was like, they finally ended up together and then right after that, she saves him from getting arrested and calls immunity because he's helping on the case, which is a real thing. And from her point of view, it's kind of crazy, but I... You know, it's like, from our point of view, she's technically right in a weird sense. It's like, he's not, he's not like the ultimate bad guy right now. Because it's, it's supposed to be Stacey Boss, but really he's just like a big crime lord. And we don't, he hasn't, he's been in a couple episodes, but, excuse me, it's still, Blaine is still a bad guy. No matter what, and he, all this stuff he did from the first season 
didn't vanish. He is like the main villain from the first season, so he did all that crap. And he definitely deserved, if not to die, he definitely deserved to go to jail for that stuff. And I couldn't believe that it happened. Like, she didn't know. And they, you know, of course they had no evidence, so it was like, well, he had, like, the letter, you know, his name written in blood and stuff, and um, Liv's younger brother with the sketch and everything about him. It's like, I understand she feels like there isn't enough evidence, and he is helping out on the case, and plus they were together. I'm sure that played, like, you know, a small part in it. Obviously it did. But just legally speaking, of course, they didn't have enough, and so she kind of had to get him to, you know, let him go free. And even though they were wrong about thinking he was the chaos killer, that's kind of okay because, um, considering at this point at least, Major isn't actually killing people, it's fine if they never catch him. I don't mind that because he's not actually killing people anymore. And it's like if Blaine, you know, got blamed for that, I'd be okay because he was definitely the a-hole bad guy from the first season. And now he's like... Now, it's hard to say he's a bad guy this season, to be totally honest, but like I said, it doesn't negate everything he did in the last season where he's basically, if someone's like a young homeless kid, he would take them and kill them. That's a horrible thing, and he did that to dozens of, you know, kids, so it doesn't matter if he's not like the main villain for this season or if he hasn't really done, I mean, he's been selling drugs, but it's like, you know, way worse from season one. It's like, it's crazy to think that he actually got off on that, but at least they have it. I mean, you know, they took the time, they, they found him, they brought him in and stuff. Um, so they can they can at least build up a case on him. They know they have all the information they need, even though he went free from the immunity thing. And I, of course, don't know law. So there has to be something, because that, I mean, that was like drug charges. So I could easily see them saying immunity for that. But if they get more info and they get the whole drug charges and full proof, which would be hard to do, especially considering the meet cute case was considered closed, it would be real hard for them to kind of get that sort of thing overruled because it's like, oh, you're working on, you know, a closed case. And then, of course, the chaos killer stuff. They have two phone numbers and his dad went missing, which was a really funny scene from him. He was, you know, and they're like, when did you find out? He was like, just now. I'm distraught. And I, that was really funny. But I couldn't believe that was how they played it. I really loved that because it was a great, crazy ending, which I wasn't expecting. But it does kind of suck. We need, you know, we do need, you know, Blaine as our villain, though. So I'm not too surprised. He's going to be fine because, of course, with um, the reversion to being a zombie again, they're going to have him in the show, of course. We're going to see that happen to both um, Blaine and Major. So, you know, it, it didn't really surprise me. But, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he's okay. But it does surprise me the way that it happened. Because I'm like, how in the world could he get out of this? Outside of the fact that, you know, they don't really have much on him. And then it was like, you know, the warrants and everything. Or the, the one warrant for possession. And it was just like, man, they, they kind of have them. They don't have too much evidence, but they have that. And that's at least three years to help, you know, them build up a case, which is all they needed because I'm sure they could have found something else. But him going free is pretty nuts. And now Peyton knows everything about him. And, it's like, she knows everything. And I love the fact that as soon as, you know, she shows Liv the picture, it's like, you need to come in and I need to basically say... This is everything bad about him. Like, he almost blew up my brother. He killed a bunch of kids. He was selling brains to people. He was selling drugs to people. He killed, you know, killed people himself. And just all sorts of crazy stuff. And, you know, I was glad that she learned all that. But now it's like, what's she going to do with her case? I'm sure she can't just, you know, say, like, we don't want your help on the case. She kind of needs it to take down Stacy Boss. But who knows? I'm not sure how, you know... At least when they meet up again, it's obviously going to be really different because she knows everything that he did as a zombie, including turning Liv into a zombie. So there's just a lot of information that was just, you know, and this is before, and she didn't even tell her about the getting arrested thing. She just told Liv that they slept together. She didn't even mention the whole, I got him off of finally being sent to prison um, through immunity and stuff like that, so... It, it, well, I couldn't believe that that was how it played out, but I certainly loved it. I thought for sure, honestly, when they were putting the dots together with Blaine, 
and they mention, um, you know, they they had the other guy from the last season that kept attacking Major. I thought for sure that they would kind of bring Major into it again and be like, maybe something's going on there, but, you know, they kind of let that go, and, you know, I, I guess it kind of proved, actually, because, you know, they found all the information on Blaine, and it's like, oh, he was this guy, and his partner was this guy, and then it kind of proved, like, oh, Major kept saying this was the guy that attacked him, and then it it finally clicked, like, oh, maybe he, you know, he was telling the truth. Um, obviously, still a lot underlying zombie stuff there that they don't know about, but it was really good. I thought they were going to get to some extra Blaine stuff again, like, oh, you know, like, two close calls, I thought for sure, but definitely a really fun episode. Um, you know, of course, Major having to give up the dog so he can't be busted. I think Robbie might you know, seemingly he was just mad at him, where it was like, oh, you gave up the dog and didn't really tell me. But I feel like he might learn pretty soon. He might be the only person that ends up finding out uh, exactly what Major's doing. So we'll see how that plays out. And I, I feel like he's the closest. Now, he, I guess technically he always has been the closest because they actually are the closest because they live together. But I don't know. Now. I mean, they've gotten rid of the dog. That was kind of the only thing that was really tying Blaine down. And they also had an awesome scene with him doing, like, the parkour. And he drank, you know, the Max Rage, and he just took off. I don't know who they hired to do that. I know that was him in that first sprinting part. But the person they had doing the parkour was really good. And I always, I love parkour, so that was pretty cool. But it was a fun episode. I don't know when we're going to get this Utopium. They've been mentioned, um, Major talks about having, like, 50 uh, states as far as license plates or something like that. Or, or not, maybe not, maybe it wasn't 50, maybe it was like 40 or something like that. But it was, you know, they, they still haven't really found anything. Um, Robbie mentions having bones and stuff, so they haven't really found the Utopium yet. And we might, I don't know how long that's going to take, but they keep going. They, they're they clearly set on a schedule because, I mean, Robbie was out there. It was almost pitch black, and they were talking about it when they were you know, eating lunch. And it was like, you know, I can't do it tomorrow, but I'm free the day after. So they're setting up schedules, and they're doing everything they can during their free time to, you know, find this tainted utopium. So it might, I still don't think it'll happen anytime soon, but I think we are going to get that before the end of this season. It might not actually mean anything, and it could end up being too late. The, um, Major and Blaine could turn back into zombies before they find this cure, and then they kind of have to work with it because they killed the one guy when he took it and it wasn't ready. So they have to be very precise and you know figure out exactly how they're going to do things. So I don't know. We'll see how it all goes. But I certainly enjoyed this episode. We'll see what happens um, with Liv as well as Peyton and the sort of relationships they have with bad guys at this point. And... Yeah, we'll see what Clive ends up doing. I know he's going to be super pissed. Both of them are going to be pissed. I wish I could remember his girlfriend's name, but I, I just can't. But I know both of them are going to be really pissed right now. And that was a great scene when he's like, you know, whatever happens next is going to be on you. Because they know that he's bad. They just don't know, you know, he's killed people. He's just not the killer that they're actually looking for, which is kind of funny. But still a horrible guy, so... Yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out, and I can't wait for this next episode because the murder involves people with no heads, so of course there are no brains for visions, and we're going to get to see it just live, and I'm kind of looking forward to that because she, of course, shows up, you know, in episodes, but, you know, we won't get to see how that works out, we'll, you know, or we will get to see how that works out where she's in a full episode, and... In the trailer, they have it where she mentions that she hasn't eaten in a while, and I would assume that means that the three bodies that show up in this next episode are going to be the only three bodies, and she's going to have to figure out a way to get brains, which means she might have to go to Blaine to actually, you know, stay sane and not go like crazy zombie mode. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that actually does play out, but this was a really fun episode. Really enjoyed it, of course, though. I want to know what you guys thought about it. So please comment below, let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And with everything that happened, you know, with Blaine and Peyton, I want to know what you guys think is going to happen, um, you know, with this whole meet cute case. It's considered, you know, a closed case. They only have, like, you know, evidence, or it's, you know, basically it's hearsay. But yeah, they still got it, and they 
they'll have to kind of work behind the scenes a little to actually build up more actual evidence but I feel like it might actually go somewhere maybe no time soon but I feel like they aren't gonna stop because they they're sure that Blaine is their guy and he is for at least half of what they want him for and the other half like I said Major's not a bad guy and he's not actually killing these people now at least he did kill like I think he only killed the first two people and ever since then he's been freezing everyone so you know, I don't mind Blaine, Blaine taking the blame for that one. So, but I definitely want to know where you guys think the case is going to end up going. If it's going to do anything or he's got immunity and that's all there is to it. Because that's a huge thing that happened. And I definitely want to know what you guys thought about it. And of course this episode in general. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.